Good afternoon and welcome to KTN News Desk. My name is Edith Kimani. This is the show where we bring you the news as it happens. Let's get this show on the road. And we begin at Bomas of Kenya, where there is a COD parliamentary group meeting where all the elected leaders of COD are currently meeting. Patrick Amimo is standing by. Uh, Amimo, you did say that the meeting has just begun, but what do we expect coming out of it? Uh, thank you, Edith. This particular meeting has been called by the COD leadership, uh, where the Committee of Experts uh, for, for COD Kenya Initiative uh, we are having a popular referendum where uh, Kenyans will be uh, making very possible the constitution is meeting to brief uh, the members of parliament, senators, governors. All right, Patrick Amimo, I'm sorry. The, court mm -hmm. the connection on your line is, is, is really quite horrible. We'll try and uh, regroup with him a little bit later and see if the connection is better. Um, right now, though, let's have a look at what's happening in Lake Victoria, where efforts to clean up that lake and reduce its pollution are starting to have unexpected effects as an array of players in the lake basin contribute efforts in diverse areas. Um, the spin-off effects of ecological awareness are now reaching even school-going children who are becoming aware of the role in maintaining environmental balance, Fred Amulo reports. Lake Victoria. The largest tropical lake in the world, covering almost 70,000 square kilometers and home to more than 500 fish species, has seen better days. And these may yet return if the level of environmental awareness sweeping its basins increases. Championed by the government through the Lake Victoria Environmental Management Program, grassroots efforts such as neighborhood cleanup drives are becoming common in western Kenya, where the lake is born every day. One of the laws that we majorly want is like we want the citizen to abide by the rules and guidelines of disposing their waste. There's, in fact, uh, in fact, the only the laws are only abiding in the urban center, the city center, and we want that also to be in the community, so that because we are part of the town. Such efforts were unheard of a few years ago, but now residents in towns such as Homabe, Kisumu, Usenge, and Port Victoria are increasingly sensitive to how their neighborhoods affect the lake. On the other hand, county governments are having a tough time dealing with both large and small scale polluters who use the lake as a garbage dump. More worrying even is uh, when you see fuel tankers and today we have uh, nabbed one being washed in the lake and the oil spilling into the water. All of us are aware that uh, we are now dealing with uh, increased cases of cancer and we keep asking ourselves where are these things coming from? This is one of the sources of this cancer that are increasing. Whilst Kisumu's authorities may mean well, powerful forces have always resisted such changes. But that hasn't stopped the message from reaching a younger audience. High schools around the lake now participate in essay writing contests about the best way to keep the lake clean, among other activities. One of the numerous channels through which the gospel is spreading. We are trying to use uh, uh, school going uh, students as springboards. Uh, to reaching the communities uh, with matters on our climate change and environment. Just planning to work with others so as to encourage others on what they should do to conserve the environment and also feed the... One of the dangers of neglecting the lake lies further downstream in the River Nile, Egypt and Sudan's sole source of water. If disjointed efforts continue to dominate handling of the lake in East Africa, more than 100 million lives will be at risk in North Africa. Fred Omulo, KTN, Kisumu County. Well, we're going to try and link up with Patrick Amimo again, who is at the Bomas of Kenya, where Cod is having a meeting with all of its elected leaders. Now, Patrick Amimo, before you went off, you were telling me that the meeting just kicked off, but we have certain expectations coming out of it. Indeed. Thank you, Edith. This particular meeting has been convened by the Cod leadership to try to inform the membership of the party on the referendum proposal they have brought forward. 
All right, Patrick Amimo, I'm, I'm sorry, no, not much we can do about the connection at the moment. So let's have a look at what's happening in Nyeri, where the fight against poaching got a major boost after the Kenya Wildlife Service announced it would start using DNA extraction equipment to assist police in forensic investigations relating to suspected poachers. Now, KWS spokesperson Paul Gavitu, uh, Gavitu rather, says the technology would go a long way in the protection of endangered rhino species. Gavitu may made the announcement a day after KWS rangers and police arrested three poachers in Nanyuki and Nyeri where they recovered eight pieces of rhino horns weighing 43 kilograms and two others of ivory weighing 6.45 kilograms. The three have been arraigned in court. We received a DNA extraction equipment that will be going towards helping us in ensuring that our forensic lab gets operational. We have uh, in the recent past been building capacity in that area aimed at uh, assisting law enforcement to ensure that we can be able to now scientifically subject uh, a lot of uh, the recoveries or issues where we need to be able to identify any particular species uh, through DNA. Miss Tourism has officially launched its 2014 edition during a colorful event at the National Museums of Kenya. Now this means that the search is on for this year's title holders and the torch bearer, rather the torch has been passed over to the county organizers to begin the search. The contest aims at identifying and promoting tourism products, increasing tourism awareness and activities while encouraging and improving public-private partnership. The event was attended by the beauty queens from all the 47 counties as well as the county governor's wives and whose auspices they will be working under. The role of the world to Kenya, I want to see Africa here and I want to live my dream. Beauty pageants and especially this one is an area for growth. Like it grows you in so many ways. You are able to learn how to be with people, how to be tolerant, tolerate, to, to tolerate people, you know, how to just be a business person also there's a lot of growth involved and i would definitely advise all of the girls anywhere wherever you're from it's not really a dream that is very far off all you have to do is try you'll never know until you try yeah This is an ongoing issue that KTN has been highlighting for weeks now, but now the Saudi Arabian government has actually denied that any Kenyan working in Saudi Arabia is being mistreated. The rebuttal comes after KTN received information that a lady by the name of Faith Wairimo was being physically and mentally abused by her employer. But it's not the first time this has happened, and even after the former president, Mwai Kibaki, banned any Kenyan from working as a house girl in the Middle East, recruitment agencies are still sending girls to work as men under false pretenses. Nikaanza kusikia ati fununu fununu watu wanalala na umbwa mara mambo zingine mingi nikashanga cuz mimi huko sikupata hata hata umbwa na si place moja tu nilikuwa tulikuwa tuna visit places sasa ma friends zao so sikupata vitu kama hizo passport yangu venye nilifika kwa airport ya huko sikuiona tena lakini pale yenye nilikuwa naenda kupanguza passport yangu ilikuwa inaekwa hapo kwa hivyo siezi chukua tu walikuwa wamenifichia passport i can assure you all you know now we have about 80000 Kenyans who live in Saudi Arabia we have about 9 million uh, expatriates from all over the world working you know with contract there's no problem if there is one or two cases isolated cases i call them it's not uh, the policy i can assure you yeah i mean I, you have to look to the other angle of, of the story it's not only one case but what about the others what about the 80 million who, who help their family who send money you know to to the family here Saudi Arabian government saying that no Kenyan is being mistreated and at the heart of this are private employment agencies who are constantly accused of misrepresenting the girls who are leaving. And with me in studio is Hussein Ednan, who is the Secretary General of the Kenya Association of Private Employment Agencies. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much. So the Saudi Arabian government is saying, look, everything that we've been saying is basically hogwash. Do you believe them? 
You know, every place has to have problems. Here in Kenya at the moment, we have a lot of problems. We are not saying that there are no problems, but we, we are trying to control them. We, we have an issue whereby we have brokers and we have agencies those are accredited, accredited by the, our association whereby you have all the accreditation. If anything happens, then we should have all the documentation. We have the labor office that we are sending all the, the returns every month. So you should be known those girls are going on the other side. The okay. other thing is... Um, yeah. Nan, allow me to come in there because you're saying that the association basically vets these agencies who then recruit the girls to send them to Saudi Arabia. Yeah. But we've had stories from these women who say that they've gone through legitimate agencies and then when they get into trouble on the other side, they're unable to reach out back home. I think uh, somebody, if uh, he takes responsibility, has to bear all the expenses, whereby... Uh, we have girls who have been traveling without any documentation at the airport. Then, then what do you expect that girl will end up to? Whereby uh, we have a lot of girls who have benefited also. We are not saying all are, are being abused. So then how do we make sure that the people who are leaving this country to go to, and we're not just saying Saudi Arabia, Middle Eastern countries, are well taken care of, are protected under labor laws, and are not being duped by Kenyan agencies? I think one of, um, one of the issues has to have all the documentation as per the government. Process. What documentation are you talking about? Uh, we have the labor, <laughs> or labor accreditation, we have the incorporation, all the documentation licensed including our uh, including our accreditation again. Okay, so take me through the process. Edith Kimani walks into your office and says, I'm really looking for a job in Dubai, Omar, wherever. Um, what's the process? Okay, first of all, I have to give you a form so, so that you feel all your personal details. Then it goes upon where, what jobs do I have? It's not only maids. We have a lot of jobs, which are professional jobs we are, we are supplying uh, out there. Mm -hmm. um, then after that, if, if let's say we take, we, we, talk, we, we take on the same banning issue on the maids. Maids, we have two contracts whereby you have Kenyan and you have the Saudi, Saudi agent. Mm -hmm. We have unified contract in between two countries. Whereby if you take that girl, he has to go, she had to go to, to that particular agent in Saudi Arabia and the, the agent will, 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 will send to, to, to the destination. And how do you find the employers? Because I think a lot of the stories we're hearing is that they're okay until they get to the employer's house and then mistreat them. Yeah, here comes whereby we have brokers. Brokers are taking girls here without any documentation. Brokers in Kenya? In both, uh, both in both countries. Okay. Whereby you have a broker, doesn't have any document, ends up in the hotel, um, uh, a Middle East man comes at the hotel without any documentation, whereby he starts with a waiter saying, can you look for me, uh, girls? Then the waiter goes out at Mashinani, mm -hmm. bring the girls to that agent, whereby that, that broker brings that girl all over without any documentation. That girl may end up somewhere else. Okay. Um, and so how do we avoid this? Because, and also, how do you as an agent make sure that the girls you've sent out there are doing the jobs that they were asked to do and not the stories that we're constantly hearing on TV? First of all, uh, I have to give a credit with the Minister of Labor. They are trying very hard to do that. They are having accredited of almost 900 agencies, whereby we as CAPEA, we are having almost 200 at the moment. Um, we have discussed and there we are going further in streamlining. First of all, we have to clean our houses. We have to make sure that we have all the documentation required <coughs> and on the other side also has to have all the numbers that require whenever it happens anything that girl has to be detected where is she working to. Okay, um, and for the families who are very skeptical at the moment, I mean we have a story right here, we're talking of Faith Wairimo, who we hear is being mistreated somewhere in Saudi Arabia. How is she expected to reach out to people, the agencies back home? First we have to know uh, which particular agent I was sent mm -hmm. with. Then second thing is uh, uh, which particular sponsor is is that girl uh, resided so those are the things that information which has to be given from down here in kenya whereby you can detect where the girl is people end up nowhere if uh, a girl runs away 
and also we, we we don't blame ourselves there also we have girls that have been running away without any documentation and they fake their names when they go to the embassy okay well thank you very much for making time to be with us Hussein Adnan he is the secretary general for the Kenya Association of private employment agencies talking on the very sticky issue of employment in the Middle East specifically for young girls going to work as house helps but the Ministry of Education has released over six billion shillings for free primary education this third term session speaking during the launch of the Kenya National Examination 2014 principal secretary for education Dr. Belio Kipsang appealed to all head teachers and education directors to be responsible in making sure that the process of conducting examinations this year succeeds we have released the free primary and the subsidized secondary ex, uh, secondary capitation for this particular term. The money is, is already wired to the bank account. Wanawiti, I want to give you that assurance. And you can assure your members. Eight teachers that you have been entrusted with a very great responsibility to make sure that the examinations in this particular year succeed and succeed in a way that we shall all be happy that we were part of this particular process.